When I'm not attempting every dangerous psychological trick in the book to convince myself that I enjoy doing yoga, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Do you prefer Martin or Taylor guitars? Fantastic question, and my opinion on this has changed over time. Now, a lot of what I'm gonna say is a complete generalization because both brands are great manufacturers that have like an insane amount of options within their lines, but just kind of my own experience, I've always liked Martins since I first started playing. And I think a lot of that was almost kind of like a misconception on what I thought the differences were. So for example, this is my Martin GPC PA4, which is my performance guitar. And I've talked a little bit about this before, but I have a love-hate relationship with this guitar. Great sound. And I have, it, I have the action set up to be super playable. But there are some issues with it. You can see the binding is kind of like coming off, which is kind of weird for, you know, it's not it's not a cheap guitar, but it's definitely not near the price of a lot of the expensive guitars. So I always thought that I gravitated more towards Martins before I even owned one. And then I eventually got what is kind of like the all timer right here. This is my Taylor GA3, which to me, this really kind of changed the game and what I thought Taylor guitars were. I always thought they were kind of like, the the super bright guitars that you would always see people playing in like church bands and stuff and then i ended up falling in love with this guitar and this guitar is kind of like my soulmate of a guitar and i think the main thing is like the body shape of it this is ga3 so a grand auditorium is the shape so it's smaller than a dreadnought and i to, to me this is like the most well balanced sound of a guitar that I've ever kind of played or of the ones that I own. And again, this is like, you know, around the thousand dollar price point as is, you know, this Martin. In fact, this is kind of like the same body shape size, just that the Martin has a cutaway. Now I will say that again, generally speaking, the higher end Martins, when I say higher end, I'm thinking of like a D28 or a D35, the Dreadnought guitars. Martin is kind of like in the class of their own as far as, you know, the mass manufactured stuff goes anyway. Uh, I think probably at some point I'll have like a D20, a D35 in my lifetime. Again, they're, you know, they're expensive, but they really are just, they're, they're worth it in my, in my opinion. They just sound fantastic. Now, the lower end entry level stuff, I think Taylor really has not beaten uh, by kind of a, a wide margin, actually. Even if you look at like the 110s or the 114s from the Taylor side, uh, they all sound great. They're a little brighter for sure, but uh, once you get into like the thousand dollar price point for a Taylor, or maybe even like the you know the two fourteens or the three fourteens, I think those guitars are kind of dollar for dollar like the standard for that price point, and I would even say they, they beat the Martin stuff at that level. Uh, Playability wise, I think that the Taylor stuff always comes set up out of the factory a little bit better to play. Really, probably like I'm super impressed by the the QA at the Taylor factory because every Taylor guitar I've ever played in any shop and any any person who's just kind of like left their guitar lying around, Taylor's always play great. Not that Martins don't, I just think that Taylor's kind of have the edge there. I think the cases, the gig bags and the cases, I will also give Taylor the edge. Uh, I will give Martin the edge as far as just the better smelling guitars, which is a weird thing to say, but like, I don't know, every time I see a Martin, I feel like it smells really good for some reason. Pungent those Martin guitars. So, you know, I think, you know, they they all have their kind of pros and cons. I mean, really, there aren't any cons as far as just, you know, what you're willing to pay for a guitar. Uh, the higher end Taylors, I know people like really love them. I, I really kind of think that their 314 is just their best guitar. Again, this is a GA3. They don't make this one anymore, but it's kind of like the 314s nowadays. And then uh, Martin, you know, the OM stuff is great too, but when I think of a Martin, I think of a Dreadnought style, the depth of a Martin versus like the crisp sound of a Taylor. So it really kind of just depends on what you're going for, but they're both great guitars. Your Udemy course has been very helpful. I gave it five stars. Thank you so much. I did the one Udemy course, which is like a masterclass I did with Ian on how to jam with confidence, how to jam with another uh, guitar player. Reviews have been really good on that. So I think maybe next week or in the next two weeks, I'm actually gonna release one with Justin. It's just like kind of like a complete fretboard mastery seeing the guitar. So there's gonna be another course coming soon. So start saving your pennies. Again, it's gonna be, you know, reasonably priced for sure. We're thinking maybe like 30 bucks, I think. So uh, stay tuned for that coming next week. Dude, you really annoy me always going up in pitch at the end of your words and sentences, plus you're whiter than mayonnaise. When you explain stuff, you have an attitude that you're better than all these YouTube plebs. 
You remind me of a bad sitcom like Psych or Scrubs. First of all, don't you ever put Psych in the same category of Scrubs. Psych being the greatest sitcom. It's not even a sitcom, first of all. Psych is just a great, great show. Possibly the greatest show of all time that I've actually modeled a lot of my own personality after. So don't you dare, nothing against Scrubs, but don't put them in the same sentence. And again, that is probably the greatest Salty Blues really turned into a, co a compliment for me because Psych is that great of a show. But I also want to say that as good as Psych is, its theme song is the worst. <laughs> Probably the worst theme song from any truly great show that I've ever heard. When is the Emerald Riders album coming out? Where can I get it? So uh, I'm working hard on this. It's one of those things that I, I'm pretty close to finishing it, but I kind of want it to sound good. I'm trying to get a lot of other musicians in it, so it's really just the scheduling of the other musicians that I'm having playing on it. There's going to be, you know, like a lot of strings and stuff going on uh, that is holding me back. But definitely within the next month, the music is going to start coming out. I'm super stoked about the Emerald Riders. It's going to be the greatest Celtic album of 2019 by far. I have no problem saying that. And if anybody refutes that, come at me. Emerald Riders content coming soon. He looks like he has Downey's syndrome. Just my thoughts on it. You know, if you say something really offensive and then you follow up with just my thoughts on it, that doesn't make it less offensive. <laughs> like, obviously, those are your thoughts on it. It's your comment. So don't act like, don't add the tag of, hey, just my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Love your jamming with confidence masterclass. The tip on finding those notes is one of the many cool parts of that class. Do you have any tips for learning scales in the open form? I've learned my scales and modes in all other places on the guitar because the patterns repeat, but learning them in the open position is a real pain. In the open position, it seems like every scale of every key requires separate memorization. Any tips would be appreciated. The teaser for your next masterclass is really exciting news. I think my best advice on learning the scale positions in the open position is really thinking of them and how they relate to chords. So again, you know, the most common open position would be C major, right? And then the scale of C major would be like, okay, finding those notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, all throughout the open string. So on the E string, it'd be E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then, you know, you can kind of just like drill those if you want. But I think the best way to look at that is through playing chord scales, knowing all the chords in a key, right? And then kind of taking the scales from there. So when I say a chord scale, that means just going through the C major scale, but it's chords. So C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B minor seven flat five, C. Because if you play all those seven chords, all the notes in that open position are gonna be in those chords, right? So if you have the chord scale down and you know really well what those six main chords or seven total chords are in any key, whether it's G, right? If you go to another open scale position like G major, G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E, F sharp diminished G, right? Be able to really look at your chord scales because getting those hand shapes is a great way to see the notes that are gonna be there because again, you're playing all of them and then transitioning between those I think is the important part. And when I say transition between them, whenever you make a change, like let's go back to the key of C, right? If we're going from a C to an A, try to find one of those notes in that scale to transition between. So the natural transition between C major and A would be the second fret in the A string, which is a B. Okay, and then if you're going from like an A minor to an F, a minor, G, F. So, right there, I think that's a, that's a song, what is that, These Days, I feel, right? Uh, probably a bunch of different songs, actually. But really, I think the best way to learn the scales, instead of, like you said, memorizing, like, okay, well, here's C, here's G, you know, D, it's like, okay, open, F sharp. I think, I think that's, a confusing way to do it because you're doing all of them in different open positions. I think it really comes down to doing the chord scales and then being mindful of where you can transition to between those chords. King Kong versus Godzilla, who you got? I don't really feel like this is a real question. Like, of course it's Godzilla. Godzilla's like way bigger, I think, and it, he can like breathe like fire and stuff. Actually, I don't even know. There's been so many Godzilla things going on that like I don't even know what Godzilla's actual powers are other than just being like huge. So, really, come on, it's, it's just obviously Godzilla. 
So for listening homework today, we're going to go to some Bossa Nova. And the reason for this is twofold. I think probably on Friday, I'm going to release a Bossa Nova jam that I did with my guys Davidas and Andreas. So that's coming soon. Stay tuned for that. And also because I went, I had to go pick my mom up from the airport last night. It's like an hour and a half drive from where I'm at. And the interstate was actually shut down. So it turned into like a two hour and 15 minute drive. And I put on a Bossa Nova playlist and I was stuck in traffic. And I was just as happy as can be because Bossa, mu Bossa Nova music is that awesome. So check this out. Start living the Bossa Nova life and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.